G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is an SV-98. This is a rifle that exists in real life, designed by the Russians, and it comes to you in Fallout 4 in the form of a highly customizable standalone weapon with custom sounds and animations. The animations are both for rechambering around after every shot, and also for reloading, and the animations look good, the meshes and textures look good, and the customization from here looks pretty good. Let's go into the attachments and see what this thing can do. So we've got the receivers first of all, which will you know grant the sort of standard stuff you get, at least for the first. So you can have factory condition, which uh, increases the damage without a penalty to weight, improved uh, chamber to increase the damage even more, but obviously, uh, actually that's, that's further reduced the weight. Entangle suppressor is an interesting one because it's like an ASL puts a suppressor right where the barrel is. So if you wanted to go for a little bit of a stealthy approach to this, you could chuck on that and then um, go from there. Although there are other suppressor options, this is just kind of there as, I guess, a little bit of flavor. If you want your SV-98 looking like that, that's totally, uh, I guess, relevant and uh, valid. This is reinforced materials. That's the best receiver, the highest damage output possible and we get better weight than a standard receive which is kind of interesting so that's fairly good although we do get slightly better damage out of the suppressor because of ace operator but we can always chuck a suppressor on this on the muzzle slot and I'm, we might be getting better range out of this with the uh, reinforced materials than we would um, with the suppressor as you can tell that's reduced to 95 let's move over to the barrels now you can have a short barrel if you want a medium barrel and a long barrel probably want to keep the longer barrel on for any application of this thing because of the range at the moment doesn't seem all that high which is kind of unfortunate we'll move on to the stocks so you can have a standard or a heavy now this has a lot of emphasis on recoil control but that's kind of weird for a weapon that fires so slowly that recoil is barely even a factor on how effective this weapon is it also makes you aim down sights a little bit slower which generally um, it doesn't really make that much of a difference with uh, aiming down sight speed, but that actually does increase the range so There's no reason not to chuck that on and there's no perk requirements So four steel and four wood that's basically everywhere now I've got the higher caliber rounds in to give us 368 damage, but the standard rounds do 316 we can have high velocity rounds Which give us slightly better range which is decent for a sniper type weapon at the cost of some damage Armor penetration gives you a slight damage penalty for better performance against armored targets an interesting trade-up Incendiary bullets probably just gives you the legendary incendiary effect So you get a tiny little bit of damage over time when you land a shot and it also immolates them which makes them easy to see High caliber just makes you have slightly less ammo capacity, but a huge damage boost which is uh yeah, it's pretty big. Does the barrel change sizes? No, it doesn't. I don't know how you'd squeeze a, a, through, a, through, a, a 50 through that because it's a 3 weight barrel normally. Um, probably just stand in for a Russian round, but that's okay. We've also got the duplex round, which basically adds the two-shot legendary effect onto this, I th think. So that damage will be split between the two projectiles, so uh, you probably won't see anywhere near that damage total, but that's definitely talking in big power. Let's just go for the high caliber round here, we'll move on and we'll check out those other ones uh, a little bit later as we get on during the video. Now for the sights on this, you can chuck a whole range of reflex sights, including the copper one, which we'll chuck on for maybe a short barreled one for close quarters and uh, use of that. So we'll just go for the six time scope on this. Uh, I think that'll be a decent to balance between range and um, ability to be used in close quarters without you know, zooming in way too much. There's also a Cool little thermoscope here which requires sniper to actually install that so that's kind of interesting and here we go here's the muzzle you can have a compensator which gives you a penalty to range but recoil control not a problem don't ever bother with these things because the recoil is not bad enough to warrant that in any case and you can also have the uh the covert combat or tactical suppressor which um the combat and tactical actually increase your range and with the extra barrel length added by that well, that actually makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, it's thrown the uh, standard game balance. If you've got a suppressor, then your range is down out the window for a little bit of realism, which is inconsistent with the rest of the game, but that's fine. Legendary effect is there if you need it. And there's a re uh, the reticule. You can change that if you've got a reflex sight. It'll just change what it looks like, which is uh, kind of interesting. You can change what the thing has painted with, the uh, at least the uh, wooden stock and uh, grip there. That's pretty cool. Let's go for... Uh, maybe urban on this, fine. And I think I missed the underbarrel, which you can chuck a bipod on, which increases your crouching accuracy. So it's kind of like half utilizing it, right? 
But yeah, that's what the SV-98 has in terms of customization. I'll create a couple more of these and we'll start shooting stuff. Okay, so now we're in Gunners Plaza, and this is what the SV-98 looks like in first person. Now, I think the dude who did the animations was Zest of Lemon, and he was the guy who made the uh, Battlefield 1 replacer animations for, I believe, the Deliverer, the 1911 mod that was released uh, a while back. And yeah, he's done this one as well, which is cool. I will actually like his animations quite a lot, so it's nice to see that kind of quality. I've also got a short-barreled one with the, the little Cobra side on it, little... That one's cool. I like this one. This will be my VATS optimized one because it's got a reflex sight and a short barrel, which means it is slightly better in VATS than what it usually is. And this one's got the thermal scope with the integral suppressor. Now, the thermal scope is kind of cool because it does highlight enemies. It doesn't look like thermal when you look through it like that. But if you look at enemies, they're super white. So that's cool. And it sort of continues after you switch weapons, which is interesting. But I've noticed the sounds of this weapon are quite loud. It's, it's pretty loud, this thing. It's a lot louder than what vanilla weapons are in this game, and that's some unnecessary screen shake. Thanks, turrets. Even turrets panic fire. It's like they've got a, like a personality chip in them, like I guess Codsworth does. They're just kind of freaking out. Right, we've been made at this point, so we've got to make sure we hit all of our shots, because misses with a weapon like this, since they're, it's a bolt action and rechambering takes some time, are heavily punished. Let's not be a scrub and... Try to not to miss a shot. Now, we could try to play this slow, or I could reload this for the future. Switch over to this one and go in all close quarters like. Now, unfortunately, you can't put a bayonet on this to, you know, help bolster its close quarters abilities. But, yeah, this thing's loud. Really loud. Now, if I fight a SV-98 in real life, yeah, it'd be about this loud. But I think the audio leveling needs to be on par with what weapons are in the vanilla game, and I I can respect the modder's, uh, you know, vision of uh, making this thing seem more authentic by having it super loud, but I think it's a little bit too much. Let's switch over to the duplex thermal scope one here and see what kind of damage we can do with it. So far, so good. We've just been taking everything out in one shot. Impossible to miss a target now. Impossible to not see a target, so that's helpful. A little bit of no-scope action here. Add that to the COD montage. But it appears that with the DPS or the damage we're getting out of this, at least with the sneak criticals, it was doing well. But now we have to be a little bit more accurate to uh, get this to work properly. Now, I'm only getting one of the numbers show up when I aim down sights. That might be because I'm hitting the... Like, it's hitting the target so close to each other that it's the numbers are overlapping each other so um it you, you do get a significant damage bonus it's like equivalent to an extra standard receiver worth of damage but it is soaked up a little bit when you aren't doing the sneak criticals yes i i do believe that the the numbers are overlapping each other so a little bit of a look at the two shot legendary effect here we're almost done we only got one more turret to take out but yeah the sv98 has been fairly good so far. I haven't, didn't make much use of the unsuppressed version, but then again, Rain probably doesn't want to go deaf because that'd be bad. But yeah, we'll test this out against something a little bit more strong, a little bit more tanky, and uh, we'll see how we go there. Okay, we'll start off at the Beartown Brewery again, and this is going to be a test on whether I can get enough uh, sniper procs to keep myself going and what I should probably do is uh, kill the big bear here we'll concentrate fire on him and use this thing in vats a little bit it's not going to be super efficient in vats but we'll get enough uh, damage here to give us a good start did I just get a collateral there yeah I did well there you go this is not the two shot variant so not with the duplex round so that's interesting and we'll just drop down here don't worry about the uh, potential leg injuries of falling from such a height onto concrete. That's fine. Yeah, so we didn't get any knockdowns there, which is a shame. They're going to be kind of few and far between because we're firing so slowly. I've managed to forget where the bear went. Oh, there he is. We'll whip out the uh, two-shot one and we'll have double the chance of getting the uh, sniper knockdowns, which is great. Also, um, he can't turn around to... You know, try to figure out where I am. So, and he's rolling down the hill. 
I didn't expect this video to devolve into dumb slapstick comedy, but I think we've been detected by bears down there, so we've got to take them out. Unfortunately, wall hacks didn't do the job for me. But that bears doesn't look like he wants to fight, which is good. We can take out all of these ones, and yep, you can really see those bears. It it seems to have some sort of uh, oh, there he is. Excellent. Now we've got the, I think we've got a pneumatic chest piece on because we're not being staggered and thrown around by these bears, unfortunately for him. Get a couple of cheeky torso shots. I'm noticing that the integral suppressor mixed with the, uh, the thermal scope here actually doesn't have a good AP uh, efficiency about it. The uh, standard six time scope that I was using before seems to do slightly better. And now he's aggroed those guys. We'll switch over to this one because it's slightly more accurate. There we go. Whoops. Better. And you, mate. Right, that only leaves the big old bear left, which... Oh, there we go. We've uh, picked him up on the scanners again. Very nice. Let's get a couple more VAT shots on him whilst we've got a little bit of time. We'll start off with the critical, let like concentrate fire, do the rest. Wow, we haven't even... Alright, we need that sniper knockdown now. I object, okay, we've got the sniper knocked down, but I object not being able to shoot through that tree. Penetrator perk, you've let me down. I think an SV-98 would do that easily. If uh, the if the Viet Cong could shoot AKs through trees to kill American soldiers, poor bastards, well, I think an SV-98 is going to do that. Unless it was maybe loaded with subsonic rounds for this. But I think I did have it up-chambered in 50. <laughs> Whether you think that's realistic is up to you, but yeah. It's pretty much the best uh, gameplay to show you through the thermal scope because there's like nothing to see except blackness and a giant silhouette of a bear. And honestly, picking out his silhouette, not really much of an issue. And that's some rapid VAT shooting there. And we're going to get some uh, mysterious stranger action, which he can actually draw some attacks. He, you'll notice that he just kind of punched the air there. He actually gave us a, a sneak attack critical again because we were in we were in caution for a second there. So a nice little distraction. That's about the most useful he's been all bloody month. And old mate bear goes down. He he dies like the rain core in, in Return of the Jedi. He just needs a giant door to crush him. <laughs> and then that fat guy to start crying. Oh, I got a dead eye 10mm pistol. That's a good drop. Okay, we're going to try the same thing, but this time I'm going to kill a giant mutant crab frog thingy. I don't know what's going on with this thing. But hopefully we'll be able to stay in caution for a little bit longer just to speed this up a little bit. We've actually managed to knock him down right away there. And then fire very rapid shots into his head there for many, many damage. I think we got the, the uh, mutation on him, which is good. Yes, he would have mutated by now if he hasn't already. I'm sure of it. So that's good. We're in danger, however. Which is means it's time for me to uh, relocate. We'll go down here. Now, he can sort of follow us through water. We can actually see him on the surface right there. He's a big glowing dude, so we're not going to miss him. But what we want to do is reposition ourselves to a place where we can once again hit him with sneak criticals. Like right now, the uh, combat music has actually stopped. And if we can get a couple more hits in bats, we'll start off with a critical just to maximize that first shot damage. And then concentrated fire will probably do the rest. Well, if he's going to sit behind a tree where I can't kill him. Oh, we've actually tossed him up in the air there. Yep. Yeah, sometimes uh, the sniper can make the game a little bit of a slapstick comedy. Because look at this. Uh, probably gonna get detected any second now, so we'll just go ahead and shoot him like this. I usually neglect using thermal scope, so maybe it's a nice little change up, I suppose. Come on, Rain, you gotta reload it. We're not done yet. Now, you'll notice how he's kind of ragdolled in the water, which sometimes if they're caught in the stream of the, like, the flow, because there's always a, like, kind of a natural flow in water, at least when it's not in a lake, um, sometimes that can stop them for a little bit more. Ah, so we're going to miss from you, mate. You know what? Let's finish this off with the loud and proud one because I've been putting this one on the back burner because it didn't do a lot of damage. 
I think the reload for this thing in third person is the same as a regular old hunting rifle. Right, no more Mr. Nice Rain. Oh, look at those shots we get. We get so many. And we got two hits there somehow. Huh. I hit him, I crit him through a tree and did more damage. And again, that was about 1200 that time. Huh, I've never noticed this phenomenon before. Also, he's, he's probably still hitting me. Don't stop shooting at him. There he goes. Well, that was a very awkward encounter. And he gets thrown across again. Rough day for old mate friggin' froggy dude over here. Thrown around like a rag doll and then got stuck onto a tree. But that's what you get for being a Bethesda AI. I, I suggest you get with the program and get used to it, mate. Anyway, so that was the SV-98. And we've, defe we've defended Taffington Boathouse. Wow, okay. That was nice information to know. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the link in the description. I have reason to believe this thing has an Xbox port out there, so if you are interested and are on the consoles, check out the description. I'll provide a link if it's there. Thank you very much for watching, guys.